Ukraine is as close as possible to receiving a missile capable of hitting Moscow and posing a personal threat to President Vladimir Putin. According to the Telegraph, Ukrainian forces are preparing to deploy a powerful RIM-2 ballistic missile. The head of the Ukrainian delegation to NATO, Yegor Chernev, confirmed that the weapon is almost fully operational. Believe me, there will soon be concrete results that not only Ukraine but also the Russian Federation will see, Chernev said. Krim-2 is a single-stage solid-fuel missile capable of carrying a 500-kilogram warhead of up to 500 kilometers. It significantly outperforms the 1970s Tochka missile, which was previously the best weapon of its type in Ukraine. The development of the Rim-2 has been ongoing for more than a decade, but the project only gained priority after the conflict widened in 2022. Amid Russian attacks on industrial facilities in Dnipro, Ukrainian specialists completed the first prototypes of the Rim-2, and in August, President Zelensky announced a successful test. The Ukrainian army will be able to carry out deep strikes that do not require approval from allies such as the United States, Britain and France, which have supplied precision-guided munitions but limited their use against targets inside Russia. As a result, Ukraine has typically responded to Russian shelling with far fewer munitions, primarily drones. With the Rim-2, restrictions on long-range strikes are effectively lifted. The only obstacle will be the speed of production of new missiles. With the Rim-2 in use, Ukrainian forces are expected to be able to more actively attack targets inside Russia, although this is unlikely to have an immediate impact on the situation on the front, where the main problem for Ukraine remains the lack of trained soldiers. Blowing up a Russian airfield, factory or oil refinery can suppress Russian air raids, gradually throttle the supply of heavy weaponry to Russian forces and squeeze the wider Russian economy. Russian President Vladimir Putin might even face the prospect of strikes aimed at him personally in retaliation for Russia's many attempts to eliminate Zelensky. But the Krim too can't prevent Russian regiments from overrunning outnumbered and outgunned Ukrainian garrisons in cities and towns along the front line. As the wider war's fourth year looms, Russia has an enduring manpower advantage despite registering staggering battlefield losses that recently have averaged around 1,500 killed and wounded troops per day. Ukrainian losses are much lower, but in strategic terms, it hardly matters. Russia is an autocracy with a population of more than 140 million. In control of the media and immune from political opposition, the Kremlin faces scant few constraints on its ability to generate fresh troops. It has consistently managed to sign up 30,000 recruits a month, nearly enough to make good, record-high recent losses. Bolivian police deployed nearly 2,000 troops on Friday to clear roads blocked by supporters of former President Evo Morales for over two weeks to prevent him from facing a criminal investigation. The protests have been concentrated in Paritani, 347 kilometers southeast of La Paz, a key highway for the country. In recent days, this has been the most disputed bastion between protesters and police. Several police officers arrived there to confront the protesters who threw dynamite from the hills. Last week, around 30 police officers were injured, one of whom was hit by a dynamite explosion. The most critical situation has taken place in the coca-growing region of Chapar, a political bastion and refuge for Morales, where his followers remain surrounded and threatened to take over police and military barracks, demanding the closure of the judicial cases against the former president. The conflict broke out three weeks ago when an order from the prosecutor's office was announced to arrest Morales for the alleged abuse of a 15-year-old minor when he was still president in 2016. On Sunday, October 27, the 65-year-old politician reported that his car was shot at while he was heading to a radio program in that area. Government Minister Eduardo del Castillo said instead that Morales resisted a search by an anti-drug patrol and fled. Hundreds of trucks with food, export merchandise, and fuel are stuck on the roads, and the government estimates that losses due to the road closures are at almost $1 billion.
muchos intentan de que cae hacia el sector de ellos. Rápidamente reaccionan. Pero aún así, hermanos, si nos quieren matar, que nos mate a todos. Así es que que no se manche con su sangre del pueblo este gobierno, y también tanto los militares, los policías, que no se arremeten a sus madres, a sus tíos, a sus familiares. Pedimos a, la, a los policías, tanto a los militares, que se unen mejor aquí a la movilización, al punto de bloqueo. Yeah.